When you invited, my name is Florencia de Castillo. When you invite me, uh, you propose me the uh, this title, and I didn't put my face there because it's no, uh, <laughs> it's, maybe it's not correct, but uh, maybe it's uh, the face that we, everyone or else mo almost myself have when we have all the result data of the models uh, in hand. Um, but I don't, I'm not going to make some psychological uh, workshop <laughs> as we used to do in Argentina, my country, uh, exposing our, our painfuls uh, together. Um, but I only want to explain something that what are we going to do with our model when we, when we test it, as all the colleagues have explained before, we start uh, recollecting data, we put we test uh, through an experiment, uh, through Asian-based model, then we verificate it, and now we have the results. So what we do with all this data? Starting for uh, the subject that I'm, I'm here for, uh, what is validation? What is the, this step of validation in Asian-based model? Well, all the results that we have from the model is are the results that we are going to match with the real world. Not exactly the model, you know, the output of the model. So this is a very, sometimes uh, people confuse and think that uh, the, the model is always uh, making some answer for everywhere, uh, uh, for everything. Uh, but validation is uh, this thing. What happened with the real world and what happened with the results of my experiment? That is what Asian based model is. It's an, it's an experiment. I uh, introduce all the basic uh, information in the model and they can taste it. Um, this is very how it approximates to reality or not. This is the most desesperating part, but not the only one. I think that the hardest part, I, know, I don't know if we speak it uh, before about it, is the beginning of the model, how we conceptualize uh, an archaeological problem. This is a uh, we participate in all the process of Asian-based modeling with computer science and archaeology, but maybe here uh, there are a few economics or sociology that shared some previous, uh, in a, we shared some sessions in, a, in some previous congress before uh, that do, they are not here maybe because this is specifically for archaeologists and computer modeling. But we all started together some years ago, maybe many of the ones that we are exposing today, uh, trying to figure out what this is about. <laughs> Even with you or with Xavi, he, like, he's a computer scientist. Um, the problem is, uh, what are we, in which way we are formulating an archaeological problem to have some result that is useful to understand or to have better explanation about the archaeological process. This is. Maybe I'm not a computer scientist, but I am an archaeologist, and I want to think about uh, how do I get better explanations about what I am thinking. Am I using what kind of uh, archaeological data, archaeological theory, or what are I assuming that the model is in my, in my formulation of the model? Some, some other computer science uh, propose that uh, models are uh, could be abstract. Maybe uh, this abstract model can be validated. Is a question that we can discuss here. How abstract is a model that then with wh what kind of that is going to be validated? Or the model is so empirical and is so concrete, it's a segment of something. Uh, which ca what kind of data will I use to explain it? Hmm? Uh, this is uh, what maybe in computers. Um, Sociologists always call uh, abstracts and empirical, but uh, one uh, computer science that pointed out the importance of historical science, that is, we are archaeologists, was Carl Troitz in 1997, who said, uh, well, you are archaeologists, you are the ones, the only ones that have the output and compare the outputs of a, pro a social process, in a long-term process, uh, because sociologists can't. They can predict, but they can compare it exactly with the results of, of these long processes. So in, in, uh, in 1997, he said that, well, 
experimental with theoretical models with uh, consequence, consequences that are known, uh, but are very useful not only for archaeologists, also for social scientists. Maybe not here, but we are in the middle of discussion with another social science. We also implement Asian-based modeling, and now they are also are discussing if it, they are enough, useful or not. Then maybe not, we are not the only one that uh, have to formulate some kind of answer to say that I will really apply this as a useful tool or not. This is what we are going to discuss. And uh, what are the data that I am going to choose to validate the model at the end of the process? There are many, no? I start with the packet of uh, information, but I'm going to use the same packet to to respond to the uh, the outputs of the model, or not? Or I'm going to use another kind of data, archaeological data, when I introduce to the experiment, maybe some parameters that come, as you say before, I don't remember who, uh, from ethnography, from sociology, from behavioral science or from another discipline. And uh, this is a process that we have to formulate because in archaeology we have patterns of distribution, we have patterns of the objects, uh, but what kind of uh, data it's important to compare or not. And one thing that maybe we can uh, just a question to, just to discuss is all you that you are modeling uh, can you validate all your model? In which way? It is important uh, if your model is so abstract or the model is so simple. It's just part of a sequences of modeling or just some part of, or we merely just one model as we sometimes do. Hmm? Okay, fine. <laughs> Yeah, question. I think you are uh, focusing on a real important uh, point, uh, at least for me, that you are saying we are archaeologists. And according to that, what do you think about the concept I have heard this day about modelers? What's a modeler? Or maybe, because I think, uh, I don't believe a modeler exists. For me, the important thing is an archaeologist that is trying to understand so social paths in the past social processes. So the question is, how do you think we can uh, understand in a better way social processes in the past, in the context of this, this discussion today? Is enough technique discussion? Is enough uh, only discussion about models? Or maybe we need to uh, start discussing also archaeological theory, like how models, how uh, uh, different techniques of modeling can uh, be discussed according to the Marxist, structuralist, uh, functionalist, historial, historical uh, approach. So I think, what do you think about that? Because I think your points are very important and uh, that could encourage discussion. I, I really don't think that I am a modeler. I'm not a computer programmer. I just understand because I think that the made model is basically a field uh, of a study that is completely multidisciplinary. And the problem at the time that it takes us to formulate two models sometimes is to understand the language of the other, not only computer science. Mm. Also, the language of economy, mathematicians, and anthropologists, and all the theory that we are assuming when we design the models. We are assuming a lot of things, and we naturalize that the Asian is well going to behave in that way. But if you use some concept, every, each concept that we use to model, always I would. I have to explain and assume that uh, we are assuming, I'll say it again, we are assuming a lot of things that are part of this concept. But sometimes this concept is not enough to formulate the model. You have to. Do you think in the name of modeler or do you prefer archaeologist? No, I think I'm archaeologist. I guess I am a modeler. I'm archaeologist and I, because the problem that I have is completely an archaeological problem. I want to have an answer and better explanations to some specifically anthropological or archaeological problems. I think that we all have in the different level. Sometimes we, we some, maybe one work with raw materials, another work with more theoretical things. 
but the thing that we are doing is that archaeology. I think all archaeologists are modelers because we all create models in our heads of Ben Davies brought up at the very beginning. We all have ideas about our systems in the past and whether we formally ascribe those to Marxist theory or we just say we're on a survey and we see some flakes and we say, ah, someone probably sat here and made a tool. We're creating models. Models are simplified ideas of other things. And here, we're just talking about making them in computers, but we all make them in our heads all the time. We make models about each other all the time. You probably have a lot of assumptions about me, just based on how I'm talking. It's just a question of how you formalize them and whether or not you use tools to do it. I think it's also um, kind of the, the phase at which archaeological modeling is happening right now. Gary Locke said this morning that, you know, was it 10 or 15 years ago, a huge proportion of the papers of the CAAs were on GIS. And now we don't have so many papers on GIS, and we're not talking about whether or not we should be representing human behavior in raster format, because we <laughs> use it everywhere. Every, it's, it's so ubiquitous now. And archaeological modeling, even just in the last five years, has really been exploding, and especially as sort of graduate students get trained up in the method and start using it, it's really expanding. And maybe 10 years from now, we're not going to be having this conversation about whether there is sufficient theoretical basis for using archaeological modeling because it will be incorporated into the fabric of general archaeological practice. So yes, I think we are all archaeologists, certainly. But at the moment, I mean, I would, 10 years ago, I might have called myself a GISist, or maybe that doesn't flow off the tongue as well. But um, you know what I mean? Like, we're all archaeologists, but we all have our own little subdisciplines within that. And, there might be a little element of kind of maturity of, of archaeological simulation. It's been around a quite a long time, but uh, it's kind of fluorescing right now a little bit. But maybe I see it in a bad way. Maybe I know that we are all archaeologists, but uh, the problem is that the questions that we are formulating are useful for the archaeology to resolve or have better solutions to archaeological problems. But in which way we are contributing to something, to explain something in a better way. I think we are learning today because uh, I'm not an expert on Asian uh, made model. I have many mistakes. I'm learning about all of the mistakes that I made from the beginning. And sometimes I repeat it. Because uh, I start modeling the simple one and then I want to have the most complex or complicated model that I can imagine that is uh, having uh, completely unuseful for me and for everyone. Uh, but it's time to learn and to put in practice a lot of things that we are still trying to understand and uh, trying to put in, uh, I don't know how you say, uh, the same frequency that uh, I think that we don't have the same velocity or as computer science evolve. Yeah, I mean, we're behind other disciplines, there's no doubt about it. But we're not that far behind social science. I don't think we're behind other disciplines. We have different trajectories. I think that saying that they are more advanced than us is not helpful. Okay. But I think that we are... Yeah, we're all we ask great, different, just in a different way. We ask different <laughs> questions, and we have different, different problems that we approach. Sure. And so it's not useful to say we're behind them. No, I'm just... I, I'm mostly talking about the sheer volume on the role of simulation in different disciplines. Sure. Yeah. Cedar, you wanted to say something. No, it's fine. It's, it's been already said. <laughs> but um, coming back to the social science stuff, um, Florence had touched on this, like, you know, how do you choose the data you will validate your model against? And, and that's been heavily discussed in social science that, you know, we are already creating a model by collecting certain data and not other data. And, and in their case, this is, you know, they, they, they don't care. They can go and ask people whatever questions. We, cannot, we are restricted to the data we have. So we, in a way, already constructing a reality we will compare our models to. And that's good to keep in mind, because it is you know, an epistemological problem, having said that you know, we don't have a better solution anyway. So. I, just very quick, I, I do agree with you, Barnes, and that, as you said, um, everyone makes models in their head all the time, so, but that's a very, wide sense of the word modeling. If we think about formal models or models um, in, in a more straight way, then not everyone does them. And, uh, and, and yes, modelers do exist. I am a modeler. I've been a modeler for 25 years. And uh, 
I do models for a living, and sometimes I do a bit of archaeology. Perhaps you guys do archaeology for a living, and sometimes you do a bit of modeling. But it is a discipline with its own complexities and a literature and, and body of knowledge, absolutely. Yes. Joanne, you wanted to say yeah. something? Yes, a very fast uh, reflection. I think that uh, what we are calling here simulation and modeling is just classical deduction. But uh, traditional archaeology is end of it. So if simulation is deduction, there is no place for validation. It is a formal system. It will be correct, provided your initial axioms are correct. But there is absolutely no way to test if your initial axioms are correct. Of course, there is some place for deduction in archaeology, and we need a lot of induction in archaeology. Theoretically, here are the two sides of the same coin. But how to integrate interaction and yeah. induction with archaeological data with deduction with historical hypothesis? And we need somewhere, something in the middle. It's not in the simulation, because you will never test the theory within the theory, but in the real world. Amen. But there are models that we need to compare, and I think that comes to is that you, Charlie? Now I think you will finish on the more cheerful note, <laughs> please. Mm -hmm. Thanks.